Hello, my name is Derek McLeod. I'm an electrical assessor at Hartford Regional College, and this is one of a series of six presentations uh, to support electrical apprentices on their sitting guilds 5357 um, level three qualification. This presentation is on unit 109, applied design and installation practices and procedures. The title of the slide says write up help. Um, we won't get hung up too much about that. Write up help reflective account. It, it's really referring to um, the apprentice compiling a, a reflective account, written testimony, okay, on the work activity, and in this case for Unit 109. For those that are familiar with the presentations uh, so far, or if you just come straight in on Unit 109, um, I've referred in the other presentations to the City and Guilds website, and in particular, um, looking at the criteria for this unit, but it's embedded within the, um, and there's a paper version that's available on, through City and Guilds website, the Level 3 Electrotechnical Qualification Workplace Logbook. So what we're looking at in here for Unit 109 is not just the criteria, but ensuring that we don't miss out on the minimum supplementary evidence requirements. And that's the case for each unit, and it applies equally for Unit 109. So we've looked at this workplace logbook, and if we look at some of the other additional uh, reference material that City and Guilds advocate in the brief at the start of this unit from the workplace uh, logbook, uh, we've got other reference material that they, they encourage um, the apprentice to look at, electricity at work regulations, current edition of your BSM 671, um, Health and Safety at Work Act, building regulations. And if we consider the title, applying design and installation practices and procedures, we can understand why the electrician will make good use of those documents. And of course, if we're on site, remember your on site guide. Okay. Um, I'm also going to advocate the book one and book two. Okay, electrical installations for um, by Peter Tanner. And hopefully you're already familiar with these books. Um, but I would say they're great reference books throughout your whole, whole course um, on your 5357. Okay, so when should you be compiling evidence? Well, basically, as soon as you, the learner, are suitably trained. Um, and suitably trained, I might have said it in the other presentations, means suitably trained at college, at the workplace, a combination of those. Whenever you're ready and competent, you should be producing this evidence. So let's look at the evidence in the next slide in a bit more detail. Okay, we're going to look at uh, Unit 109 in more detail. Uh, all of the criteria for 109 are on this slide. But you can also see in addition, we've got the um, minimum supplementary evidence required on the right hand side of this slide, lifted from the workplace logbook. And it's basically saying sitting guilds expect a minimum of four wiring systems to be installed, four different types of cable installed by the apprentice and four different types of electrical equipment to be installed by the apprentice. You need to write about, okay, or um, record or video, um, workplace evidence to that effect. If it's video, quite clearly the assessor can see it's you. But for any other form of evidence that's submitted by yourself, uh, you need to provide sufficient photographic evidence or images to show that it's your work. We don't want to see anyone else installing this. It's got to be your work. 
and how many depends basically once the assessor is satisfied that it's your work okay um, the information you provide within the job write up or video or audio recording will be suitable and sufficient so we'll look now at what it is you're, you're talking about. It says some ideas, some ideas of what to say, what to write to help meet the criteria. So we've got to prepare in to install the wiring system, enclosures and associated equipment. And we need to carry out a risk assessment. It might be that there is a produced risk assessment. So we need strong statements. I've read and checked that I understood the risk assessment and method statement and ward a correct PPE arising from it. If there isn't one, you'll do a dynamic one. I carried out a risk assessment and then selected the appropriate PPE. So you're satisfying one one A and B just from that strong making that strong statement. One one C select the appropriate tools. Okay, the appropriate deport tools would be dependent on the nature of the activity, depending on what you're going to install, but explain the tools you're using don't leave it to interpretation by the assessor you're explaining how the tools and equipment are kept in a secure uh, storage facility when you're on site okay you've got lockups if you're in a, a, a domestic a dwelling environment it could be that we've got lockup boxes so explain how everything is kept uh, secure. Select the materials, 1, 2B, in accordance with the installation specification. Well, simple answer is provide the installation specification and then provide your materials list. Okay. Um, one, three is use documentation to confirm that materials and, and equipment. So what sort of document documentation are we talking about there? We're talking about materials list and delivery notes. Okay. But make a strong statement. I'm checking my materials list um, against the materials I've picked, ensuring I've got the correct quantity and that they're free from damage. Talks in one to D and E about make, confirming the site is ready for the installation work to begin. Make a strong statement to that effect and that you've got authorization refer to how did you get permission was it an instruction from your boss will say so a text provide the screenshot an email again copy in the email so it's none, sometimes it's not about writing everything it can be just by providing the correct attachments to support your testimony Now we want to come on and look at 1.4, 1.5, 1.5a and 1.5b and 2.1a to e because it's having the correct uh, information at hand to look at the planned location for what you're about to install. 1.4, ensure that it's compatible with other building services, gas and water check the planned location uh, with regards to its cosmetic appearance and external influences now you know they could be many and varied but what are the uh, appropriate types of information you need to be referring to now in this write-up or the evidence that you present but of course we've got specifications if we've got any attached copy any work schedules or programs manufacturers instructions layout drawings other sources of information and that will be appropriate for providing evidence here about what you're going to install because we are going to refer to bs 7671 the relevant sections dealing with external influences um, the relevant sections in on-site guide with regards with regards to the building regs uh, the heights of switches and sockets in appendix uh, H6, um, appendix D of the on-site guide, how we're going to support cables and wiring systems contained with appendix D, the selection of the cables in appendix C of the on-site guide. So 
you know, referring at the appropriate point to the appropriate sections of on-site guide and reg books is relevant here when we're talking about how, how and what it is you're going to install. 3.1. Um, explain how you measure and mark out, okay, whatever it is you're going to install. As simple as using spirit levels, using tape measures. In the absence of that, okay that's really not good workmanship is it we can't see it's in use and you're fitting electrical equipment and components how on earth do we know that it's going to be level you know marking and setting out appropriately making sure things are level they're not nice to haves they're a minimum standard of a professional electrician aren't they and now we get in to the installation of uh, in the first instance 3.2 cables and what does it say install cables in accordance with BS7671 and we want to see four and we want to see you do it on two occasions so how you do that is entirely up to you you can do all four in one hit but remember we're going to need another time where you're going to install cables or we can do a combination of or you can do more than uh, four, but at least on two occasions you're going to install cables and when you're installing the cables make sure you're explaining the cable type clearly the, the amount of cores and the CSA the cross-sectional area of the core of cable that you're installing make sure that you're a good opportunity how do we know if that cables the appropriate one well that would depend in on the for example the protective device so take the opportunity to explain the protective device that's going to be um, installed with the cable and when we're talking about installation of cables remember with there are factors to consider those are your uh, external and other influences on the cable selection but routing cables is important um, in accordance with BS7671 let's ensure that they're you're explaining that they're kept within the zones where appropriate and for cables uh, and for cable support systems we can refer to appendix D of the on-site guide methods of supporting the cables and wiring systems so the spacing of fixings for cables for example you know make a statement so be basically explaining the workmanship that you're ensuring you adhere to when you're routing and installing cables the same would apply with 3.3 installation of uh, the wiring regulations the um, for from the different types of cable support systems everything from 3.3a pvc conduit down to 3.3j buzz bar systems or power track so if if they are installed they'll be installed in accordance with the installation specification the suppliers um, instructions and BS7671 that's a strong statement to make and would be appropriate here but we've got other things when we look at the it would be appropriate to talk about some IP codes when we talk about um, metallic trunking wouldn't it and the capacity of conduit or trunking is um, you might want to refer to appendix e of your on-site guide and make a statement where relevant um, if you're installing that then we've got the installation of types of electrical equipment uh, in three four and again it's a list select four from the following okay remember that's at least four different types of electrical equipment and on two occasions so that's total four two occasions okay that doesn't mean two occasions of four no it's total four but on two occasions 
and install them in accordance with BS 7671 uh, installation specification and very uh, important here manufacturers instructions when we're installing electrical components pretty much everything on this list will come along with manufacturers instructions and of course we can either attach it into your testimony or you can for example embed the hyperlink most reputable suppliers now will have data sheets available online so you can embed the hyperlink for the manufacturer's instructions when you do your um, evidence submission so uh, we move on to three five how you communicate with others professionally um, and appropriately to aid the effective installation well we do there'll be people you liaise with you'll, you'll be working probably with colleagues so we will be communicating just say you know i worked with my colleague and communicated with them regularly to aid the installation it's what we actually do and it might be that you had to communicate with other trades but we do so in a professional way because that's the standard expected of apprentices now considering what we're looking at in 109 cables uh, cable support systems components it's at this stage um, we're first fixing i mean especially on the cables and the cable support systems we're producing waste so make a statement to, to, that shows how you manage waste uh, and remember dispose of waste materials in accordance with the site pre procedures and statutory requirements and if it's waste and metal waste we want to separate that and avoid that going to landfill so ensure that you make a strong statement about that now as we wrap up this unit we go we look at the confirm the quality of the complete completed work a little bit of quality control on your part um, so basically that list from 4.1 a down to d just don't make a shortcut that's a great that's a great statement to make you know once i installed i ensured that the whatever it is you installed was the correct type and fit for purpose in accordance with bs 7671 it met the installation specifications and it was installed in accordance with manufacturer's instructions so that's actually uh there's no real shortcuts for there just just write that or say that because that is in effect what we do when you complete because it's part of the um verification of anything that you've installed that you actually carry out that function anyway so that about wraps it up for 109 there's a lot here between 108 and 109 we're talking about the first and second fix of pretty much the majority of work that you're going to be doing and make reference and it's th this stage that we are making reference to our reference guides our regulations our bs 7671s our on-site guides um, any pocket books that you've got and building regulations so by the time you've done 108 and 109 you're making a lot of progress on your workplace portfolios and you'll have mapped you'll have cross mapped 108 and 109 pretty much they hand they go hand in hand i mean especially installing the electrical equipment that's a second fixed activity so if you're installing electrical uh, equipment like sockets where you'll be connecting conductors to the sockets so there'll be 108 and 109 that goes in there um, in any event i hope you found this helpful um, please leave feedback if there's anything else you want me to cover i will do um, and good luck good luck on your uh, apprenticeship journey and um, look out for my next video.